So I have some very bad news to report. Ruby, the Rottweiler that has been a part of a dozen videos on this channel, she died suddenly through a rapid, aggressive cancer last week. So this is what happened. On June 8th, Deb, the owner, Deborah, discovered a lump the size of a golf ball. She immediately bought Ruby to the vet. The vet ran a, you know, did all the blood work, took a tissue sample to do a biopsy, and uh, gave Ruby some medicine to help. Ruby was hardly able to breathe. Uh, the inflammation was kind of choking her, and her respiratory rate was very rapid, and that first night was really tough. Uh, Deb didn't know if they were gonna even make it through that first night. She called me on the phone and we talked and um, they gave her some uh, medicine that would reduce the inflammation that evening and uh, that worked. And by the next day though, there was a new lump, a second lump, the size of an orange or a grapefruit. It was huge, also on the neck. She went back to the vet and the vet said, are you sure you, you never saw these lumps before? And I wanna give a little background of who Deb is because she's never on the video. She chooses not to be in these videos. But Deb competed in the horse world and horse jumping, eventually did Grand Prix jumping for 20 years. So she's from the UK and she is a horse person through and through. So for Deb to miss a tumor in the neck area would be highly unusual. Deb knows her dogs, she knows horses thoroughly inside and out. So the vet couldn't believe it. The biopsy came back and it was a type of cancer, a type of lymphoma cancer. But they feel that there was other cancer, maybe a second type of cancer in the body. And within 10 or 11 days, Ruby started to hemorrhage massively. Every time she defecated, there would be a ton of blood. And this just happened within 10 days after the first tumor. Deb called me, I told her, you gotta bring her right back to the vet. And they said they have to do it now. So Deb called me and I was on speakerphone while she was going through this. So I'm gonna really miss Ruby. And uh, I hope you enjoy this last video. What did you notice first? On Wednesday night, I felt a hard look under just behind the jaw, mm -hmm. right there, um, on the right hand side. And you can feel that right in there. It was like, it was much bigger at the time, it was like two golf balls. So we went to the vet on Thursday and they drew blood and they took lymph, lymph cells and mm -hmm. lymph nodes and uh, other cells out of her and tested everything. When she got up on Friday morning, she had a second more massive lump on the other side. So it was growing quickly. Yeah. So they did the uh, they did the biopsy, yes. they did the lab work, and, when uh, we and then it, you had a very aggressive growth yes. that kept multiplying. Yeah. And um, and she. The vet couldn't believe the second lump was so quick, and it was there because the day before right. she didn't have it. And how many days ago was this? That was Friday. Today's Monday. Okay, so we're talking about um, three days ago. So she's on prednisone, which took the swelling down a lot. Right, I mean, prednisone's a tough drug, but it does bring swelling down, and she would, had a hard time breathing. Yes, because I spoke with yeah. you, and I was very distressed, and you calmed me down. Yeah, I, I told her on the phone, um, you know, how long, how long ago did you take the prednisone, or did Ruby, and you said it was a couple hours ago, and I go, yeah. um, you know, keep an eye on her tonight, but the prednisone should kick in, and by the morning she'll be breathing better. And she was. And she was. But that was a tough night, wasn't it? I, I was actually thinking about taking her to the emergency vet to put her to sleep because she, she mm -hmm. was gasping for breath and heaving. And yeah. It was awful. Now and She's a lot better at the moment, at least. So. Okay. And did you, um, ooh, and that tickled. She's so happy to see you again. <laughs> um, did, uh, did she get her appetite back or she still have no appetite? She's not got much of an appetite. She's eating a little bit. If I go and get her cheeseburgers from McDonald's, she'll eat. But her food, she's not interested. Okay. Only the snacks and the goodies. All right, well, let's, we gotta be gentle on her, you know, especially around her neck. 
Can I? Ruby. Woo! It sounded like she was being okay. strangled on Friday night. Yeah, because she was choking. Yeah. Um, so, do you think I can work with you today? You know, I was thinking maybe we'd start with a full body massage. How's that sound? Good. You get a little full body massage from your favorite chiropractor. All right, so we're gonna do that. You guys can watch me work on her, and I'll do a light adjustment and uh, make sure I'm not getting into the neck area here, but it, all her masses are anterior neck, the front of the neck, and the spine's back here. So um, I'll see what she shows up with and just start working, but we're gonna start with the massage. And she's got and something here on the side of her mouth. On this one? Yeah. She had a growth there, uh, yeah. Was that part of it, they thought? Yeah, it's, that's gone down, too. Oh, poor thing. I can feel it's really hard, too. Yeah, it is very hard. It feels hard. like a gigantic peppercorn. All right, so I'm going to just start massaging her head. And this is the head and face massage. So I'm doing nice finger rubs on the forehead and over the eyebrow and along the jaw and the masseter muscle and on the snout and the lower jaw and there up in between the eyebrows and around the orbital and let's do the other orbital and this doesn't have to be done hard this is soft this is nice they love to be touched rubbing the head rubbing the face rubbing the other face your left side of your face, that's what I meant. Okay. Now I'm back in the back of the skull at the occiput. In the pole area where the occiput meets the first bone. Remember I told you that once? Okay. You're a good dog. Everybody loves you. Everybody needs to leave Ruby comments and encourage her to be okay. So they didn't... to eat the herbs. You got to eat the herbs, and the veterinarian laid out some nice herbal plan for her too, right? Yeah. But they didn't give her a long prognosis, right? Wasn't one wasn't, to two months. One one to two months. Unless we're very lucky. Unless you're lucky, especially because how aggressive it's been. So now I'm on the neck, and I'm going to massage your neck. Is that okay, Ruby? If I massage your neck. So I'm on the back of the neck. There's no lumps here, there's just muscles. You're so muscular. You have big muscles in your neck. Okay, so I'm gonna massage your neck. And now I'm gonna use double thumbs. We're circles. And I'm grabbing the skin. A dog like this, you can grab the skin and gently pull like this. She's enjoying that. She loves this. And then we can play with the ears. Yay! Squeeze out the ears. Nice. Reach around and do the little shoulder blades. Now the dog shoulder blades are on the side. And here's the withers area, and they call them withers on horses and dogs. Did you know that, Deb? No. You can say withers for a dog. It's not in every book, but dogs have withers, and we're up here. T3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This area is your withers. And then the saddle would go right behind there. Okay, so right here is where the saddle would fit. Like you were carrying a little rider on top of you. And now I'm going to come down the shoulder blades. And I'm, I'm holding with one arm because she'll collapse in a second. So I'm trying to hold her together. And not bad though, right? Thank you for kisses. I love when you kiss me. Okay. Oh, you just, uh, kisses. I didn't say you could bite my ear. You snuck a bite in there. Okay. What was that about? She's like, as long as I have mine, I might just bite that little ear. Okay. Now I'm working into these muscles up and down the spine. Massaging all the achy muscles out of your body. Massaging in here. Massaging down the hips. So in this case, Ruby's a senior dog. 
How old is she? Ten years old? She's almost ten. Almost ten. And she's got some tight muscles down here at the hips. And if you remember by seeing some of the previous 11 videos, she has, um, you know, a horrible leg injury from when she was a puppy that has left her leg, you know, lame on that side. And she gets around quite well for how distorted the alignment is. Um, and you can see that in some of the earlier videos. But now I'm on the hips now, so now you can lay down. You must be tired now. Okay? Oh, you're so cute. Okay. So now I'm going to do long strokes. Put your head down for a little bit and just enjoy this. Okay? All right. Maybe we should get you a pillow. Oh, sorry. I know this is bothering you. All right, let's get this in here. Lie down again. Okay, we'll do some long strokes. Big long strokes. Long strokes. Pulling up on the muscles of the belly and the rib cage. Working around the hip. You can double hands up like this, look. Especially with these bigger dogs. Do you see that? So I'm doing this now. Gives me my little octopus, right? Because my thumbs aren't really doing it, so it's eight fingertips. Eight fingertips. It's a nice contact area, right? Now with little dogs, you gotta use the smallest surface, but this feels good, right? Then your belly. What do you think of this, Ruby? Is this on your bucket list, Ruby, of things to get done today? She's Me like, you can come and do that every day. You could work with Dr. Doug one more time, maybe. Maybe two more times. Come see you again. All right, so I'm doing a nice long strokes. And you can make this very technical. Like, here, look at me. Let's say you're really technical and you have to know exactly which muscle you touch and make it really anal or analytical. Notice the word anal is an analytical. Or you could just say, you know, I'm just going to touch this dog with all the love in my heart. And you don't have to make such a big deal of technique. But you make that contact. And let your hands mold over the muscles. And you feel the dog. Feel the exchange of energy and love and warmth. And work on the dog just the way you mean it, you know? everything into it. Right, Ruby? That's what we do when we work together. Love you so much. Okay. Oh, Ruby. Let's bring this leg and watch. Well, look at all this hair. Here, let's go. There you go. So we're going to squish the leg and straighten it. Squish it, compress, and straighten. Bring the leg up. You want to lick that thing? There you go. Good, good job. And then bring it down this way. I'm going to stretch a little bit. It's a little tender that way, isn't it? I don't want to take it that way. Okay, we don't have to today. So let's bring it into stretching it out into um, abduction. And now that I have you up here, I'm going to do some belly stuff, okay? Notice how gentle I am. And Ruby's a big dog. 90 pounds, right? More or less, maybe? She's actually 93 now. 93 pounds. Okay, too much burgers for you. I'm gonna rub She's the belly. A lot more now. Rub the belly, rub the inner thigh, rub this inner thigh, softness of the belly. It's a very vulnerable area. A lot of dogs won't give you this area. Okay, but we're going to be gentle and soft. Ruby, trust me, because we've worked a lot together. Now I'm rubbing the pads, pads of Ruby's little toes. Getting in between each, ooh, ooh, going in there. Ooh, going in there. Look at this, I'm going where no man has ever gone before, I think, right, Ruby? What do you think of that? 
Those are some crazy areas between the toes. Working the hip a little bit, small circles. First I go clockwise, then I go counterclockwise. Back on the butt and the glute, hamstrings, quads, quadriceps. You know, I'm doing technique and not doing technique. The main thing when you're massaging a dog is to just not only pat them on the head. Like some people, the only contact they really ever give their dog is this, okay? And it could be more, it could be more than that. You could do these long strokes and feel what you feel. You know, one cool thing about Deb is Deb, Deb is a horse person. She's worked with horses her whole life. Deb is uh, Ruby's owner and mother. Um, but Deb touches Ruby all the time and she's the one that found the mass. So by knowing your dog, you'll know what belongs and what doesn't belong. And you might not be able to come up with your own diagnosis, but you can come up with like, that wasn't there last week. That seems wrong. I need to bring my dog in to see the doctor, the veterinarian, right, Ruby? Mm -hmm. So, um, and as well as you know dogs, you probably even know horses better, right? Yeah, and I do it with the horses every day too. Yeah, you, you, check, you, you check them and, and see if there's something unusual going on. And early diagnosis can sometimes save lives. You know, sometimes you get a very aggressive diagnosis that might not make that difference, but, but that's one of the benefits of massage and touching. Again, not just the same two spots you always touch, but, you know, exploring new areas to comfort your dog, to calm them down, to desensitize them so that when they are with a dog handler, a vet, a dog groomer, getting their nails clipped, getting their anal glands secreted, that they'll be used to being handled and not so um, upset or stressed out to be touched. Okay, now I'm behind the, kind of behind the ears and the side of the jaw. And then you got your little paw up in the air here, high five. I'm gonna work on each little finger. Okay, and giving you a full body massage today. How good does that feel, Ruby? You must love this. And here's the chest muscles. Oh my God, the chest. The chest is so good. Okay, we love the chest. You know, because there's a lot of stress in the chest for dogs, because you're a quadruped. This when you're a quadruped, you put weight on your chest all the time. Like right now, my chest is not doing anything. Here, look at my chest. Ruby, do you see my chest? Not doing anything. But you, your chest is working with your front legs touching the ground all the time. Now, if I walked on all fours, my chest and my shoulders would get a lot more work. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm on the chest now. I'm coming down to the lower part. Up and down. Up and down. Coming up. You can see my hand in here. Good. I'm just working with you. Okay. You're a good dog. I missed you. I haven't seen you in so long. Hi, everybody. My name is Ruby. Leave me a comment. <laughs> oh, it's stretching. It's stretching. Oh, my God. I'm stretching my arm. Let's do it one more time. Stretch. Stretch. Okay. Let's try this side. Stretch. 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 I'm gonna rub this side now. Your nose is running. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad because the uh, masses are pushing everything up. Oh. So. All right, Ruby. Poor thing. Is she dripping on my shoulder? No, it's not that bad. But... Now you can do patting. Patting's good. When you do this, you want to cup your hand a little bit so you're not hitting with the flat part of your hand. That's more of a spank. Right? But if you cup, it's more... Well, 
there's a word for a massage called tapotment, and but it's percussion. And so here, let's see if she'll let me do it. So I'm just trapping air in the dome of my hand. So create little domes in your hand. You can't do this with the little dogs, but with the big dogs you can. She likes that I do that on her hips, but I wasn't cupping my hand, so I'm not doing it. Now you gotta go back to cupping now. Yeah. Just a little hand cup. And you could do little karate chops too. Karate chop, karate chop, karate chop, karate chop, karate chop. But I think cupping's better for you, so we're gonna go back to cupping. Now we're gonna do some skin squeezes. Roll up the skin and squeeze it. Roll up the skin and squeeze it. Roll up the skin and squeeze it. And we don't want it to be painful, so it's just whatever the skin will give us. You might have a dog, like let's say you're working with a little Italian Greyhound. You can't, it's a more delicate dog with delicate thickness of the skin. So you can only do what you can do. Not every technique is gonna be suitable to every type of dog. So you take what is given. Now, Ruby has some loose fur and skin, really easy to grab and she's not flinching or squirming away from me. So um, her heavy breathing is part of her illness right now. And, um, you know, and she's excited right now too. Okay. So I'm still massaging her, you know. But look how nice it is. She's getting love and she's getting this nice massage from her favorite chiropractor. She was very happy. Does she have other you. chiropractors or am I the only one? You're the only one. Oh no, that's not true. Oh. She went um, in East Hampton a few years ago. She did acupuncture and But that's before she met me. Yes, and she didn't like going there. So that was her old boyfriend. Well, I don't know that he was a boyfriend. I had to drag her in. She but this not like it at all. But you don't have to drag her in to see me, right? No, she comes right She runs, runs in to see me. Okay, I'm the new guy. But I've been around for a while, right, Ruby? How long? Like two years, right? Year and a half? Two years? She's been coming to you for a year. A year. Oh, feels like two years. Okay, now right now, you guys can't see it, but I'm actually been working the whole time. Now I'm doing a little thigh roll. So this is her whole quadricep series. Vastus lateralis, intermedius, vastus medialis, and um, just giving it a wiggle, giving it a wiggle, okay. Oh good, look at that. Okay, what are you thinking about? What's in your little brain right now? What are you thinking about? You're thinking, boy, I'm so glad I came to see Dr. Doug today. He's giving me a full body massage and a facial, and a facial. You know, a little collagen treatment for you. A little facial rub. Okay, a little facial, a little scalp massage. Okay, this is so good when you get your scalp rubbed. Now we gotta get on that left hip, okay? So I'm gonna push you down and get on the left, the left hip is her, her long time issue, right? Yeah, because okay. of the... Uh, All right, the so how are we gonna do this, Ruby? Do you think you can spin around? There's really no good way, so I'm gonna just kinda knock you over, okay? Oh, you gave that to me. All right, let's do some belly stuff first. Belly, 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 rub. You got a big belly button. You got a big belly button. That's the belly button song, Ruby. Okay, you're so good, I love you. Okay, now I'm on this hip now. Okay, there it is. Okay, I see what's going on. This hip is a little misaligned. Okay, oof, my nose is itching a little bit. Because there's hair everywhere, Ruby. You're allergic to Ruby. Not really, don't say that. All right, so here we go. So this is, this one actually needs to be adjusted. Let me see if I can get an angle. Oh, that's the bad spot. Can I adjust so the, can, she almost bit my face off. Can I adjust this bad spot, Ruby? 
Oh, Ruby. Let me get the bad spot. Ready? Nope. I think that was it. Look at all the hair came off when I did that. All right, Ruby, come back. There's more to do. That was a good shake, though, Ruby. Yeah. I might use this instrument because there's still a bad spot there. I got some of it. It clicked a little bit. I don't know if you guys could hear it. But um, there's more. So her sacrum is elevated on the left, and it's putting pressure. It's also her lower lumbar and sacral junction. So it's the lumbar sacral junction, okay. and it's irritating some of the sciatic nerve down the left leg. And yikes. So come on over here. All right, one more time. All right. I'm gonna use this little adjusting instrument, okay? It's gonna be a little tap on you. Got it. Let's do another one. Don't leave yet. Oh, don't leave. Alright, there you go. Yeah. Alright, you ready? That's it, baby. That was it. So I got it. So that was her sacral base. I did two. I did sacral base posterior left because the sacrum come tilted up there. And then I also adjusted her, her lowest lumbar uh, touching the sacrum. And I did it on the left side because of the irritation down the left leg. That's gonna help her walk a little better. She still has that deformed back left leg from her injury when she was probably nine months old, right? Seven. Seven months old. All right, she's in the kitchen now. She wants to drink. She's drinking a lot with the prednisone. Yeah, it's making her drink water. Um, let's get her back in because I want to finish up and um, I do want to look at the atlas because that's always nice to do the atlas and that might even, the atlas can affect breathing and um, salivation, okay, because you've been salivating a little bit and that's not, I can't take any credit for that, it's not like you're salivating because you saw me and now you salivate. That was a joke, that was me being funny, Ruby. When I make a joke, you got to laugh. Okay, so here we go, right atlas. Nope. Got it. Ooh. Is that okay? Everybody take a big breath in if you're watching. All right, so I'll keep everybody posted how Ruby's doing. I just adjusted your Atlas Ruby and basically I adjusted C1 and Sacrum. Two good spots for you, okay? And then I did some body work. Let me check your TMJ on that side. Let's do that. Is this your TMJ that goes out sometimes? Ready? Ooh. Did you hear that one, Ruby? That was good. All right. Come sit up one more time. Ugh. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Give Ruby love and encouragement. She needs it more than ever right now. And, um... We're so glad that everybody could see this, and I'm so glad I got to be with you today, okay? Thanks for watching.